when I do the lid, some women like to use a um, primer, eye primer. I sometimes just take the same concealer color and just go over the lid. And I just want to point out, um, oh, hi everybody, I don't know if you can hear me because I don't have the microphone, but as you can see I have a dramatic, um, different colors in my face and maybe that's why Brenda chose me because my face is very challenging that way. I have really deep dark circles. really, really good at uh, blending everything, which I don't know if you agree, but for me, that's one of the hardest things to make the face look really even, and Brenda's a master at that. Oh, so thank you. Today she will have yes, hopefully her. today it'll, I'll still be good. <laughs> it's really, this is the first time I actually am doing makeup sitting down. <laughs> that's right. That's right? right. Wake up for a second. And yes, I was working and I fainted because I didn't drink enough water when I was doing sports. I was at the um, Notre Dame game. It was a hot day. It was a hot day. And I ignored. So anybody who doesn't listen to that inner voice, I'm going to be listening to that inner voice now. So right now I have like the same concealer on her lid. I'm putting here and then I'm just going to feather it out. Now, when it comes to products, everyone's face is different, and what works for one does not necessarily work for another. So that's why, like, a lot of times uh, influencers are great because they're just having fun with, with their, um, uh, their products, with their face, and you get to see a lot of, and just so everybody knows, I'm working from the product, but I sanitized everything. So... Uh, so as I was saying, like influencers, they take it to the next extreme, meaning that just because they're showing you something, that doesn't mean like uh, it's going to work for you. If you're comfortable working with fun colors, then it's great because they are experimenting with, with new shades that are out there. We all know in the fashion industry that with, with Paris, when they just had their fashion um, week, they actually did a very smoky eye with the red lip. Milan was more demure. London, of course, fun, eclectic. New York was very um, subtle, very minimal. And, of course, Chicago, we just do what we want to do. But you know, what's nice too is like, the trends out there, they're just updated versions of everything that has already been done. So like the wing, you know, that everyone loves to do, um, they were already done before. But like now, to update that wing, you can do it with color. So it's like, you can take the black line and then you can just put a little bit of gold or, or whatever. Um, just having fun, because that's what makeup is about, having fun. Um, let's see, I'm going to put a little. I have one question. Brushing or concealer, what's better? Or well, like I like to use this type of a brush. Um, these flat brushes kind of mimic your fingers because you're actually, you know, um, pressing it. So. Sometimes the fingers, if they get too much moisture, it, it helps pull out. But if you like a sheer look, you could also take a brush like this and either even feather it out more. Because of COVID, uh, I mean, I still use my fingers, you know, to sanitize. But a lot of times, it depends how comfortable your model is, whether you're using your fingers. And a lot of times they they prefer for you to use um, brushes. And that's the one thing that you should invest in. Like makeup you can buy anywhere. Um, and you can do a high end, you can do, because remember, cosmetic companies, they pretty much own a lot of the lines. So you may be buying 
Glory L itself, but Clinique. It's just what works for you. Um, the, um, let's see, okay. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a little bit of powder under her eye. Down the center of her nose. She, she tends to be a little bit more oily. And that's the other thing. Like, you don't have to put powder all over your face. You can just apply powder where your areas um, are oily. Because to me, like I said, I love, if you're doing editorials, you can go ahead and do crazy makeup. If you're doing every day, you still want that person to look like who they are. Um, if you're doing glamor, you, you want it to be like, you can go over the top or you can keep it like where it's still glamorous but still natural looking. Um, and for me, like I said, I like to bring out your, your beauty. But, I mean, for like New Year's, I did Maria Elena and we did a little bit, we pumped it up. Um, where at first, I think you were like, is that too much? But then when she right. saw her pictures and because it was evening, it was like really just very pretty. The, the lashes were exaggerated, but when, you know, lighting means a lot. So if you are outdoors, you don't want to glam up that face a little too much because then you see the makeup and you're not seeing the person, okay? Um, and let's see, because I, like I said, I'm doing just a real simple right now look for her. Um, go ahead and smile. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a little shimmer, or I should say a little pink color on the cheeks. Smile for me again, babe. I'm excited to try some of these colors. This is just for my palette, but um, uh, has some really pretty colors that they just put some shadows here that I'm going to try on her for a little glam look. <laughs> and then for her eyes, I'm just going to keep it real simple right now. And she has oily lips. If you're going to work with glitter, it's it's creamy. No, it's here so much better. But right now, because I'm going to do the colors later, I'm just doing a real soft uh, look. Now, I don't know how many of you work with liners on the waterline, but what's really nice is when you are doing uh, your eyes, a lot of times if you don't want to go through, you don't have the time or you don't want to put um, a liner on top, you can just, I'm going to lift this up a little bit, you can just get real close to the lash line and just tightly go underneath the lash. Let's see. See, and it just gives a, a, just a little bit. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. Um, and when you put mascara on, and when people ask me what's my favorite mascara, I always say like, I really don't have one because we use disposable um, brushes for uh, mascara. So to me, the mascara is only as good as the brush. So because I'm not using the brush, I, I'm not like, and I personally don't use mascara, so it's very difficult to say, oh, I like this one the best. I swear by <laughs> Maybelline. <laughs> only because, like I said, I use dispos disposable. So I'm just doing this little bit of mascara, but you also want to get to like the base and then later on the second coat, you can bring it up. I don't want to put too much on her because I'm, I'm going to 
glam up her eye in a minute. But see, let's see. See, that's just real minimal. It's just a, a, a real soft look. And yes, you can put another liner, but from here, oh, I guess I should do the other side of your eye. When you do the lips, if you like a fuller lip, you can go above, you can lift the lip like this, and you can go right on the line. I probably should have done half so that you could have seen. But it just helps to um, get in there without going on top of it. You're basically putting the, the color right on, but by lifting it, you're making the lip a little bit fuller without too much of an exaggeration. And then if I wanted to, I could come in with a deeper color. Now when choosing lip liners, a lot of times people say, what do you, what, you know, how do you choose? I like to start with a liner that really matches your lip. So if you notice, like when you pull down, that color is very, very similar to her own lip. So I will line it here and then just fill in with the color. I guess I should do your other eye. <laughs> I didn't take the liner there, did I? No. Oh, and here I go. Doesn't matter how much makeup you have, you never have enough room. <laughs> so true. All right. Does anyone have any questions or? Well, first off, you know, the thing of it is, a lot of times when I'm doing makeup, I just think everybody knows, and you're like, well, everybody knows how to do that. And, but a lot of times I think that um, there's always something to learn. I mean, I, I don't think that I can say I've never learned anything. I mean, I've been doing makeup for a very long time, and uh, I came late to the game, but I find that I'm always learning something. And another thing, too, is when you want to keep it simple, and I know um, a lot of women have a hard time, they say, with mascara on the bottom, that they don't, that it smears or, or they don't like it and they just want, like, a little bit. Um, there's little fan brushes that work really great. So you would just get real close to your lash. And you can take, let's see, what do I do with it? And then you could take a little brush and just kind of work that in there. That was like a pointy brush, right? It's a little fan. Oh, no, the other one. It's oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, it's, like a pointy. Yeah, it's like a little oval. So then what happens is you don't have to, because a lot of times, you know, we're like, oh my God, somebody's asking me to go, you know, out with them for whatever. And you're like, I just want a little makeup, but uh, I don't have the time. But sometimes when you take this little fan brush and you just go underneath and, and you take uh, that little brush, let's see, are you eating? Yeah, it's just enough to give you a little bit of, um, oops, let's see. And just to finish her little day look, you can take, let's see, look at, okay. A little bit of gloss. You don't even need lipstick, lipstick, because your liner basically is your lipstick. And you probably could use a little more blush. About the what? Concealer. Yes. So um, a lot of the times when I put on concealer, I would set it, and then there's these little crinkles that come underneath. Does that mean that your skin is dry, or does that mean you 
Sometimes I think maybe the application is a little too much, so that means that your concealer is not working for you. You're trying to make that concealer work for you. You know, it's like you're, you're either uh, the product is dry, and a lot of times what you can do is you can take your moisten, not moisten, warm up your finger yeah. and kind of go. Now, do you set it with the powder? I have, but then I, I was confusing Tarte because they're there. That's, there. yeah. So but they came out with a new one. Tarte came out with more of a creamy one because that dries so fast. And what you should do is you're probably bringing it up, correct? Yes. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to keep it more in the moon okay. and then from there work it out. Yes. So I'm not going to do that with her. And I'm like, you know, it's setting. It's setting for the night. I'm like, how is it supposed to be? <laughs> and, but you're, you're using the brush too. And that's, I don't use the brush. I have my fingers. Your finger is okay. Use the ring finger because okay. it has the least amount of pressure. So when, like I said, though, when you when you're working with a concealer like um, Tarte, it's drying. Um, it could be the right color, and if you're putting too much on, yeah, that's when it it'll crease um, and it won't look flawless. So yeah, so just basically work in the moon, and you could still use your ring finger, and then just like start bringing it up. But it's it's really where you want to, and if you want more. Once you're done with your face, you can go ahead and put, take a brush and then just kind of like, maybe a, if you're gonna use the powder, don't put the powder, maybe use a lighter powder, a lighter shade or a mineral powder, you know, that has the softness yeah. and just in there. All right. mm -hmm. well, let's see. I'm just gonna... Oh, sure. Um, it depends. If you like your lip liner, I personally like the lip liner to match your lip. Okay. Then if you want to pump it up, like go um, and put a, a deeper or brighter color over it. First, first, yeah, see, like, I have no problem. I, I mix, and I will work with two or three different color liners. So to me, um, it all depends what you want your lip to look like. So like some women, uh, like for me right now with this look, I just wanted something real simple, and I'm just putting a little blue in there just to make the eye just pop, and then from here I'll go into more dramatic. But some women love red lipstick, okay? So when you wear a red lipstick, you have to be very, very careful. So I always say start with something that's a little bit lighter than the red, line your lip, and you know, you could still find the undertone of your lip. Do that color and then come in with the, the red liner. You could also do the liner more neutral, like a brown red, line the lip. But again, I, I shouldn't say brown red. It should really match more of your, your lip. Put a little bit of the color of your lipstick, you know, on the bottom. Go like this. Then come in with the, the liner that you want brighter. So this is the liner first and then the lipstick. Yes, and then you can come in with a brighter liner or the liner to match the lip. So then it, it gives it a more um, <laughs> yes, and and all and also and also like more even and kissable because mainly that's <laughs> because because I mean you know like there's so many women that love like blue lipstick and purple lipstick. Purple. You know, and, and those are great and they're fun and they're trendy, but you have to like be able to like work it. You know, the thing of it is a lot of guys are like, oh God, you know, the purple lipstick, whatever. But it, but the thing of it is, it's like you have to wear it when, if, if you feel comfortable, you own it and you don't care what anybody else thinks. And that's what makeup is about. So if the person you're with doesn't care for the blue lipstick, well, you know, that's his problem. Okay. That's the way I look at it. But, but yeah, I, I do um, tend to like to work with a, a lip liner that matches your lip, whichever shade you want to go, you know, so hopefully that answered. Okay. 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 So I would say this was her look just for every day. Okay. I mean, not, I shouldn't say every day, just for a look, like if she's going to get together with like her um, friends or whatever. Now, and from here, we're going to go into a little bit more. Um, 
I don't really follow trends. I think I, I, think I may have said that before, because to me the trends, they've already happened, but they're just being updated. But right now, um, Black Opal came out with, um, they just dropped off these really nice palettes. So what I think I'm going to do is I probably will use a little bit of the glitter. And, you know, you can do a smoky eye without going into an extreme with the blacks. You can do smoky eyes with purples. You can do it, you know, in so many different ways. That's why I said makeup is fun. You can do whatever you, f you feel like doing. Um, and you like to play with makeup, I can tell. So, you know, it, it, and that's what it's about. Um, the industry is always trying to figure out how are we going to get customers into um, the stores. I mainly work in television, but for us, it's TV makeup. So it's a, it's a little different. Um, you know, you have to create the highs, the lows, and still make that person look, you know, presentable. And you can always tell when an anchor has done their makeup if they haven't, like, um, right? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> because like right now, we're, we're, because of COVID, we're still not at the station. But, you know, Maria Elena hasn't nailed down. There's a lot of them that have already nailed it down. And we had to teach everybody before we were let go anyway to do their own. And there's still some that don't follow the rules <laughs> when it comes to TV. They're still doing their own. But um, to me, I, I love um, ex the expression that eyes make. So I think I'm going to do like this pink gold, and I'm trying to think if we want to do purple, or I know, it's purple? Yes. Okay. I like smoky too. Funky. Well, that, you know, that's, that's what's so um, fun about makeup, and like right now, there are so many palettes out there, um, and like I was saying, there's, there's a store called Case Squardo in the city, and she does mostly um, for film and TV, but the colors that some of these companies now have come out with, you know, they're very comparable to uh, Pat McGrath or, or um, uh, Lady Gaga's line, House. So you can always do um, fun things, experiment, because glitter is not for everybody, right? <laughs> All right, so let's see what we can try to do. Okay, before I lined you, I've never worked with these colors before, so this will be fun. Let's see how this color is. Let's see, open. Okay. And again, when you're going somewhere, you do not have to remove your makeup, okay? A lot of times women think like, oh my God, I have to remove my makeup. Well, maybe if you put too much on to start with, eh, maybe. <laughs> but a lot of times what you can do is if you find that you are getting, uh, you're creasing, sometimes you can just take a little bit of moisturizer on the palms of your hands, and then just as you do this, you can just warm up your skin. And if you notice, I had only put powder on her T-zone, and the reason for that is because on a natural look, you want the skin to look all glowy. For evening, oh, I had put purple, I put purple there. I'll take it off in a minute. Um, you want the skin to look like skin. Let's see, babe. And if you've noticed, I'm just using the same brush. <laughs> and if you want the, sh the shadows to be more, um, like, more pronounced, you can go ahead and either put, um, work with uh, a mixing liquid, 
I didn't bring any of those, but the mixing liquid helps, or even, um, I'm trying to think who has that. Uh, it's a, like a glitter, looks like a, it says glitter glue on it. I don't know if it's NYX. It's some, and what you do is you can put a little bit of that, it becomes more tacky, so the more shine you want, or the more glitter you want, it adheres to it. But, I mean, I probably could have done that too, Maria Elena, but um, I, uh, first off, didn't bring it with me, and second off, I'm not trying to give her an editorial look, because she may go to dinner with her husband later, and I don't want him to be like, who did your makeup, mm -hmm. right? Now, too, when, you're, when you um, are doing, or you want to do a little smoky look, you don't have to, like I was saying, work with blacks, black shades. You can go ahead and the same little brush I used before. Look up for me. Oh, look up. I could just take that same purple and try to go underneath her eye. Now this is where you have to be careful because if you haven't uh, taken care of like the dark circles, sometimes uh, you can uh, accentuate them. And because I, when I was cleaning her up, I had purple on my finger, so now I'll have to clean her up in a minute. But, um, and I don't know if anybody has tried that new trend with um, what they're calling the soapy brows. Have, have you? So is, oh, no. You, so you, it's like okay to have raccoon eyebrows, that's what they're making. Well, yeah. Right, like a more sloppy, yeah, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, like this. Yeah, that's why it, it's, it's, we're all a different, and of course our ages mean a lot. Like what we're willing to, I mean. Nope, not yet. Well, you know, well, the thing of it is, when you um, start working on your brows, I know right now it's it's like brows are all over the place. You can do um, neutral or you can do... Sometimes if, if you are like a very, like clean brow, sometimes you can actually take hairspray. Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever done that, like on the brush, and you just comb them and it, they stay better than some of the gels. <laughs> like on those disposable little brushes I was showing you? Mm -hmm. Turn all of it towards me. Now, Mariela has a very full brow, but even, no one has been, you know, born with perfect brows that I know of. And I, I know everyone always says they're sisters, not twins, but unfortunately, my bad thing is I'm always trying to make them twins.
Now, instead of, well, maybe I will anyway. Let's see, look up for a minute. What happened? Oh, you are? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to say, TV is tricky because if you put too much, you really look like a raccoon. If you put too little, your eyes look very little. So it's like the right balance. And Brenda is a master of that. <gasps> Thank you. Sometimes we have multiple parties. I'm going to get a big like, head. <laughs> I won't bring that. <laughs> okay, so when you put your eyeliner on, you can do two things. You can, some people start in the corner. I always like to start kind of like one third in, kind of draw the line a little bit, get very close to the lash line. Okay, and then I don't know if I'm going to put, I don't think I'm going to put wings on you. Okay, look down. Let's see. Okay, look down. So you could draw your line just with, with um, a you know a gel liner, and then you can come in. Where is it? Okay. Can't wait to see it. Right. She, yeah. She's. So I'm just okay. So then. With a little angle brush, close for a second, I'm going to just go over the, the liner I just put on. Now, some you know women love it really, really, really dark and thick. But when you um, are just trying to give yourself a nice glam look without going too extreme, you still want it to look pretty. And then you can go with a liquid liner over it. And that just helps to seal it. Let's see. Uh. Try to think under the eye. Mm. And you can line the inside of, of the waterline if you want. I'm just going to take from where I went and just go underneath her. I give her a little smoky look there. and then just put a little shimmer in there. All right, let's do the other eye. I, get, I didn't say, but like under her eye, I had taken um, black opals, it was a gold, and I put it under her eye to lighten up. I don't know if you could see a little bit of um, the gold there.
Does anyone have troubles when they put their lashes on, if they wear false eyelashes? A good trick is, when you're going to put your lashes on, you put your mirror on the table, and then you put your lashes on. You look there. Oh. Instead of going this way, you look down. So looking down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you comb up the brows, and if you notice, she has really very pretty brows. Yes. So what you can do is you can take a little angle brush. Let's see. I would say they're perfect. No, <laughs> they are. Uh, and you would just like fill in a little bit. Now, the nice thing is you could either use a powder or you can use a pencil. Now, sometimes you can use both. I don't really have to do much to her brow, but working with a spoolie is always a good idea because it helps for you to feather out the color, okay? Um, just to show you with a pencil. Let's see, where can I put some on here? Ah, I can still go over here, okay. If you're working with a pencil, you wanna go the reverse, like this, okay? And when you do this, oh, you're against the growth. Yes, against the growth. Because in this way, you're applying the color, and then you take your spoolie, and then you're going to blend it out. Mm. Now you don't fill in your brows, do you? Just like this gap. Yeah, right. Gap that is, you were feeling. Now you can, if you want, like. If I have time, I'll put lashes on her. And you can extend the, the uh, tip. When you're doing a dramatic look, you always have to remember, your brow is the frame, your eyes the picture. If the frame doesn't work well with the picture, the picture will never look good. So like a lot of women will either start with their brows here, but you always have to start basically here. So you, your frame, like I said, it, it, it's what makes the picture stand out. So that's why, because she's, I went a little bit more glam on the outside of her eye, I'm extending the end, do you see? So, and it just makes, see, do you see the difference? I mean, you could kind of see the difference, right? There, and then, but before it worked well because she had a very natural look. Okay. And again, because this brow doesn't have that much, bring your face down a little bit, I'm going to extend it with a pencil. Uh huh. It's it sticky. Like a, it looked like a tattoo. Yeah. Like, oh, no, like well, see, and, and that's the thing. It's like you, you always want to, oh, is time up? <laughs> oh, we've been taking questions, but yeah, you can. Sure. The wax goes on after, or the gel goes on after. You know, it depends what look like you said you're trying to achieve. So... Right now, I just put a little wax in here. Right? Yeah, because um, when you start playing like this, it's a, it's a look. And brows right now, that's why I was saying the soapy brow, it's almost like Brooke Shields had her look, now they're trying to invent and that's why I said that's what trends are. They're just updated versions of everything that we did way back when. And there's a lot of young, um, you know, uh, women that, or girls that weren't around in the 50s or 60s or 70s, so for them, everything is new, and they're just playing it up. So, okay, and before I clean you up, 
I know. Hey, Brenda, how, yes. so how are we doing? You know, I'm a mom, so I got to keep everybody in line. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> how are we doing as far as um, your presentation goes? Are you good on time? We got about five Okay. Well, right. Basically, I started out with a real neutral look. So yep. right now I'm just trying to glamour up. So with the natural look, we never did um, contouring or anything like that. If you notice, it was just pretty skin and just a pretty look. So right now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a little bit of contour here. Okay. And I like to keep the, the, on it depends like what, you're trying to create, but you never want to go, like you'll find the, the cheekbone, but you never want to go below here, okay, Be, by the uh, earlobe. Is that the, no, not the earlobe. What do we call this part? Between the, the ear. No. no, no, this part of the ear. No, no, here, this little part here. So, right. you know, that's, that's, usually, that's usually where your cheekbone is. Do you see? Like when she smiled, that's where it's at. Okay. Any doctors here? <laughs> <laughs> Smile for me. So do we have um, any questions with some of the things? I know you, she's been asking. And the same you, color I'm going to put there. I'm going to put on the side of the nose. But any, anything that you really, really want to know, even if it's something that she hasn't touched on. Come on, you got like one of the top oh, yeah, celebrity right. makeup artists here. Here, I'm going to. And see, you could you what? you don't have to have that many brushes. You can just take your brush and do what you needed to do. Okay, so oh, go ahead. Question. Sorry. So, as far as sponge, oh, I'm Daisy. My name's Daisy. Hi, Kimboa. Daisy. Hi. As far as sponges, um, as an applicator, what would your advice be? Okay, the great thing about sponges, you can use it once and toss them. Are you talking about like Sally's? Or are you talking about the beauty blender? Beauty sponges instead of brushes. Well, to applicate, uh, you know, to apply makeup or foundation. I, if if the foundation is heavier, mm -hmm. the sponges will work better. Okay. Okay. And if it's sheer, you know, the brush. But like I was telling you, how I applied the with the brush, and then you come in with another brush to. So that's the nice thing about brushes; they are multi-purpose. Like I said, this is a contour blush brush. I just used it on on the side of her nose just by flattening it, and then just go here. And then over here. And then, or, or saves you, can, you or, a lot or, of money on plastic surgery. Oh, and then also much. you can use your fingers. You can take the color, warm it up, and then just kind of go in here. Okay. Oh, I know. We're, we're running out of time. Okay, wait. No, no. Go ahead. Right. Any other question while you're doing okay, your work? Smile. Here, we've got some. And then the blush, I always like to put, like, more here. Uh, I have a question. How frequently... This is Bella, Bella Roca. Hi, Bella. How are you? Okay. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Awesome. Uh, just a question. How frequently we should change the brushes? You don't have to change your brushes. You have to clean your brushes. Uh, so you can either use baby shampoo and conditioner. When you wash your I have a sanitation. Um, I have it here. It's a sterilizer. So I wash my brushes. I put them in the sterilizer, and it cleans them for me. And it also dries them. But when you wash your brushes at home, which you should, it depends how much you use it. Because remember, all the bacteria, if you're not enclosing them in anything and they're exposed, everything that's out there is just dust to everything. So when you do wash them and you condition them, like I said, you could just use baby shampoo. You take your brushes, you know, you squeeze out. You don't go like this. You go this way. So then your brushes last because the more you go like this, they start getting... Okay. So when you remove the water, you go like this. And when you lay them down, you don't lay them down on a paper towel or anything. You let them overhang. So they're not sitting in anything because the, again, when you're drying, you're causing bacteria. So you just want to, like I said, lay them flat over the counter, or whatever, where they're not. Yeah. Sure. And Bella's a designer. So we're glad uh -oh. you're with us. Nice. Okay. Nice. Anybody? Alguien más? Smile, Beth. We have a question. What? We have one more question. Smile, Oops. Va a estar lista para la fiesta, ¿no? Yeah, claro. 
Hi, my name's Elizabeth. Two questions, actually. Hi. Okay. Uh, favorite product or product that you've seen works best for a makeup remover? Removal and uh, how did you get started as a makeup artist? Oh my god, that's a long story. Um, <laughs> makeup remover? Are you talking about like eye makeup remover or? In general. Well, for me, um, you can take any kind of a cleaner, but you really need to cleanse your face. There, you can use a wipe. You can use whatever, so you don't go to bed with it if you're lazy or, or tired or, you know, most of us all go to bed and we go, oh my god. My makeup looks so great. I'm going to go to bed. And, you know, and sometimes you wake up and it's perfect. The thing of it is you really do have to wash your face, whether it's a gel cleanser, whether it's, um, like I, I was saying before, I like to work with dermatologist products because they're made, the clinical studies on them have been already proven. So I know that they're going to work. Um, if you have rosacea, you know, you, you can talk to dermatologists and they'll, they'll find a product for you as opposed to like over the counter, there's always perfume in there and you have sensitivities to it. You can break out. Every product will work well on your skin for the first 28 days. After 28 days, it's like your skin will react one way or another. If it likes it, you can, you know, but sometimes your skin after 28 days, it's like, I don't want it. You know, I, it, you start breaking out or you start having, you know, like little issues. I got into makeup only because um, I, when I started having my children, I didn't want to go back to a nine to five job. So I went and bought myself a Merle Norman Cosmetics. And before that though, <laughs> I went to school to be a, a court reporter. That didn't work out for me. So then I got into the legal field by being uh, assistant to the administrator of the appellate court. And that's when, when I started to have my kids, I'm like, I don't want a nine to five. It was exciting, but boring. So when I got into makeup, I was like, oh my God, it's like, I can do makeup. And I liked it. So I got into the bridal business, doing a lot of brides and then photo shoots and things like that. And then after, I think I had the business for 13 years, but um, I, I started working at Channel 7, freelancing at, you know, other um, stations. And then I, at NBC, I've been there because of COVID, it would have been 20 years. Uh, last year, but I made it to 19. Uh, but it's been a really uh, fun, and I mean, I most makeup artists start 16, 18, you know, they start playing with makeup. I never played really with makeup, and I, it was just the passion that I ended up getting from doing the brides and, you know, different uh, shoots that I was like, oh my God, you know, and then I started getting calls, and uh, the, the rest is history. But yeah, it, it, it's really, um, I find that my kids are always saying, you know, time to retire. Because like I said, I started late. I think I was like, I think I was. Those kids. Maybe about like in my 40s when I started in makeup. I mean, like professionally. Um, and yeah, they, they're like, I go, I am retired because I'm doing what I want to do when I want to do it. So to me, that is your ultimate goal, to love what you do, and you're never going to work a day in your life. I mean, that's been my philosophy, and that's what I find that that is true. So, you know, um, I say, if there's something you really want to do, and right now it's a hobby, and you need to, uh, you're working towards, you know, your hobby or, or, or whatever, eventually, if you're hobby gets to be your passion, then that's, that's the goal. Sure. I'm going to put a little powder and I'm trying the black opal powder. So our, the product today that we're using and our sponsors are black opal. Mm -hmm. I do want to tell you that later today, um, there's another makeup artist that's coming on at four o'clock and he's actually going to be talking about black opals, um, pre-products, you know, um, they, they have an incredible soap that they use, incredible cream and everything else that you use underneath the makeup. And one of the things with regards to black opal, so the owner's a good friend of mine. She's going to be on the panel. Her name is Desiree Rogers. One of the things about that makeup is she's working very closely with a dermatologist, um, which is what Brenda was just mentioning, you know, to make sure that it's really top quality. So, that's why I agreed that it had to be part of what we're doing. Um, this is very pretty. Yeah. This is what I just put is, over what she had on. That's over. my color. I love that color. Well, I'm giving it to her because I used it right from the bottle. So. Yeah, I love it. I love that. You're welcome. You look beautiful. You're always beautiful. 
tan bella, siempre. So I'll put the lashes on. Sure. Yes. And I think this is going to be the last question. Yes. So I'm going to come over here. Let's see. Vilma Colomb. Wait, bring your I wanted up. to know, how do you stop your um, eyeliner from dripping during the day? Because sometimes um, oh, I got my makeup on and people look at me and I'm like, oh, what's the matter? Were you crying? I'm okay. Like, are, no. are you talking about a gel liner or are you talking about a liquid? Liquid liner. Okay. When you Is it a waterproof? Yeah, that's why. So what you want to do is sometimes if you are having issues with a gel, uh, um, a liquid liner, you could do two things. Like I put the liquid on her after I put the powder and then I put a little, I, well, no, I did a gel liner. I did three things. I did the gel liner. Um, the gel liner will give me a little bit of thickness and then I can take the powder and soften it and then the liner will seal all of that. So what's happening is you probably have a little bit of oil on your lids and there's nothing that the liner is adhering to. Uh, so if you like a thicker liner, you're better off using, like I said, a gel liner and, or powder. And then you come in with, with the, the uh, liquid because sometimes when you go too thick, it, it will start to um, you know, break down. Yeah, I would get a waterproof. And that's the same thing with mascara. Um, so many times, you know, we we um, don't want to use mascara, uh, but if you use a, a, a waterproof mascara, it really does stay on. So, Brenda. Yes, darling. I want, a, do you have one last thing? Because I know we've got a, so they're hungry. I've well, they could go and eat. I'll just finish I've, her lashes. I've got some food for them, but... Do you want to give one last message? I want to give you one last message. Oh. Thank you for being so incredible. Oh. I mean, amazing being with us today. Can you guys give her a big round of applause? Thank you for being here. And and I know we'll have you say something, but while they're getting some food and everything else, you can come finish talking well, because she's going to be a few more minutes, I know. Yeah, because I'm going to put her eyelashes. lashes on. I can't let her go without lashes. Yeah. And the nice thing, too, is like with lashes, you can you can um, cut them and you cut them from the outer end if you don't want them the full length. The other thing is, I don't know if anyone here has tried the uh, magnetic. I'm not talking about the magnetic where you put both of them together, but the magnetic liner, that works pretty well too. And, and you know, if I would have been able to go to the store, I probably would have gotten that because that's like one, two, three. When you're talking about your liquid liner, you can even use that, the magnetic liner, and that'll really stay on. You'll have fun trying to get that off. Yes. So, so yes, for you, for you, yes, you could wear it for a week, but don't go too thick because it will break down too, but it'll be breaking down and not the way that you want it to. But yeah, magnetic liner, perfect for you. Pardon me? Okay. Bring your face down. Well, thank you. Um, I also want to let you know, we moved the food out there, a couple of different things. I know we've got one of our big sponsors from UPS. They're raffling. They have a raffle out there. So you should ask them, you know, how they do the raffle. Because if it were me, I like winning stuff wherever I go. So if you can, you know, win something. We've also uh, got a, a number of different photo Sorry ops out there. So take your picture. We got this really cute little machine that immediately gets your pictures. I love that. I uh, I want I want to do that. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but you know how you order like these little toys and stuff. Um, and so there's some food out there. There's some great shoes, dancing shoes that you can get. I think Velma got some. Well, oh. oh, good for you. All right. So make sure you Very know to cool. do that. Oh, and again, so Brenda's gonna stay a little bit and finish up, so you can also have a chance to talk to you. Her. And I want to tell you, so when you're done eating, it'll be about half an hour that we're going to give you. We've got the panel. And the panel is the best primer is a positive self-esteem. So we've got some incredible panelists. Adela Cepeda, you know, there's about 1% of Latinas that are on corporate boards, and she's on a couple of them. So she's incredible. Talk about the money, she knows how to handle money. And then Desiree Rogers, she's the That's what I owner need. of Black Opal. That's the makeup there. And um, and she just bought another line of 
makeup. She'll be here as well. And then Fernanda Flores is going to be here. She's a super, Hold you know, well-known uh, influencer. And then we've got another individual that's going to come on. So anyway, it's a break for you. Yeah, we're coming back here. So enjoy for a little bit. Thanks. Big round of applause for Brenda.